everyone <clears throat> welcome back to my channel bow and arrow tarot today we're going to be doing the weekly read for july 21st to july 28th for the sign of capricorn all right my lovely capricorns uh, my regulars and subscribers thank you for coming back and watching the video cross watchers always welcome uh, most of the other videos are up now this is just the last three videos going up now and um yeah, you know the drill, right? We're going to get out your two Romance Angel Oracle cards to represent the two energies in whatever main relationship that is taking center stage in your life this week. It could be a love relationship. It could be a relationship to do with friends or family. It could be an issue at work. Whatever the dynamic is, we're going to look at the nature of the dynamic and what's going to be happening with that relationship this week. All right, Capricorn, so let's get right into getting your cards out. I think I've cracked it with the background music. Again, it's way well from Manchester, England. And I believe I've got it to the right level now. So let me know. All right, folks, your first card out is let go of control issues, right? This just came out as well. I believe it was uh, either Sagittarius or Scorpio. And attraction. Beautiful energy. Attraction is a beautiful card, you know, it's the law of attraction, right? Enjoying the moment, enjoying yourself, feeling beautiful, feeling comfortable in your skin, right? So, um, those are our two cards, but we won't really know what that all means until we get into the actual reading. So, we're going to pull your seven cards out now. along with my lovely Capricorns this July 21st to 28th. Show me. All right, Capricorn, let's see what's going on with you this week. All right, your first card out, Capricorn, is nine of cups wow so that's kind of a wish fulfillment in a way right um it's a wish fulfillment it's like nine of cups talks about a specific wish sometimes getting a specific wish right um but it's not you know it's not like we have total happiness here right um here it's kind of um he's apart from all his cups right and so it's more like attaining wishes rather than living your wishes if you know what i mean and so the final piece of the puzzle before we get to ten of cups is 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 injecting yourself right into your relationships um inherent in all the nine cards are, is a sense of solitude and separateness right and so understanding that it's about uh giving all of yourself to have a true connection is what then finally exalts you to the Ten of Cups. But certainly in the Nine of Cups, we find ourselves having a lot of wish fulfillment, getting a lot of what we've wanted. Uh, things are kind of coming up, you know, for us, you know, in terms of relationships, getting what we've wanted in terms of friendships and things like that, right? Generally, um, things coming into our favor, right? For the most part, certainly wish fulfillment for the most part. King of Wands is in for you, for you, Capricorn, and for your partner, you have Hierophant. Interesting, this card has not come out for quite some time. And then for a little while, it was coming out for all the readings. Tower is how you see the relationship. Wow. Certainly, control issues are here. So your person has Six of Swords for themselves. They have Knight of Wands for you. Interesting. And they have Five of Swords for the relationship. Wow. All right. So bottom of the deck, we have the chariot. Chariot talks about um, preparing the path, right? Preparing the way, getting all of your ducks in order, getting your focus, your intention clear before you set out on that path to, uh, to your goal. Because once the chariot is engaged, it will go along the path that it's been sent. And so the chariot warns us to make sure that we've made all the right preparations, that we've put the right intention into our desires, um, that we've prepared the groundwork in ourselves and in our environment as well, so that the path we choose towards our goal is the right path. Now, oftentimes when we don't prepare ourselves or we don't prepare 
uh, the world around us, right? Um, we end up somewhere else and not where we had desired to go. And sometimes people will say, well, how, you know, I don't know how I ended up getting here, you know? It's that famous Talking Heads song, I think it was, you know, this is not my beautiful wife. This is not my beautiful life. How did I get here? And that's because oftentimes the preparation, the, the preparation to the path itself, the, con uh, the focus on what is needed to prepare the path is overlooked, right? And so the chariot kind of goes wild and ends up someplace you never, uh, you never expected. And so this is all about uh, preparing, right? So this energy is there in terms of underneath of this whole relationship that you Capricorn are very much now still on your preparation. You're still preparing for um, being on the actual path the path, doing the work, the labor. It almost seems like you're still trying to get the environment, yourself, and everything tuned right so that once you do finally engage that chariot, it's going um, in the direction that you wish it to go. All right, so for yourself, you see yourself as king of wands. So king of wands does have a lot of control, right? I mean, he's the passionate king. He's the fiery king. He's the ambitious one. He's the one who will go after an idea and make it happen, right? Uh, something very unique. He's very unique, this king. Uh, he has total control over his dominion in terms of uh, everyone knows, everyone that heeds him, right? Everyone knows that he's the wise king. He's the strong king. He's the courageous king. He's the king that leads his people when they are down. He's the encouraging king, right? Um, and so uh, there is this level of control here, though. When we get let go of control issues, I wonder if, you know, because the king of wands insists on being the leader of those around him in a way, right? I mean, he takes on that mantle, and sometimes he will snatch that mantle. And not really so much necessarily in a bad way, but only because he knows he's the best one for the job. And so it can come off very, uh, it can come off really kind of... Um, off-putting, right, for people, like, I guess, haughty in a way, right, full of yourself, but it's like, you know, King of Wands energy, I believe, is Sagittarius, right, specifically Sagittarian energy, so we're talking about here someone who goes after sort of their, their goals, right, uh, and can be misinterpreted, right, this energy is like he he knows, you know, when he knows he's the best one for the job or he knows when his advice is the right advice, it's like he, he insists on it because it's for the good of everyone. But sometimes it can come off as if, though, he's just doing it for his own ego. But certainly right now you are seeing yourself as the man in charge wherever you're at. Um, we're going to get into this relationship, whether it is truly a romantic relationship or not. Attraction is there, but I wonder when I look ahead at the cards, we'll, we'll get into it. So this is how you see yourself right now in this part, part point in time in your life, certainly this week. Your person, though, is getting away from discord. Your person may have been dealing with a lot of arguing and bickering, a lot of backstabbing energy, and they've made kind of a conscious de decision to turn their back. They're turning away. Uh, right now, they're turning away from scenarios that are not healthy for them. They're working conscientiously towards more harmonious relationships and communication. This is a conscious decision on their part. I feel like they're very fed up, right? They're very fed up. I don't know why, um, but they're fed up about something, right? It could it could involve you. We'll, we'll get further into it, but they've come through. When I say fed up, it's like they've been dealing with the... Um, a recent period of really just like, ugh, you know, this kind of energy uh, with, from people that just, you know, is exasperating, it's exhausting, it, you can see it for what it is, it's very childish, right? And you just don't even have the patience for it. It's like when you get to a point in your life where you just don't even have the patience to argue with somebody who you know is being an ass, right? But you just can't even be bothered to go into the, you know, detail of why they're an ass, right? You just like, oh, why should I even bother telling you, right? Let me just walk away. And so this is the feeling I get very much from your person. You see them and you get the hair of fat. And so you see them as being somebody who's quite moral, right? Quite, quite stringent, um, very conscientious. You see them as someone who takes the high ground a lot, right? Um, 
I think you're attracted in to that in them, right? But I think that there may be a little bit sense of kind of like, do you live up to that? I'm um, certainly if you have a little bit of like a control or anxiety over losing control, somebody who presents as hierophant who has who because hierophant is having a lot of control of yourself. It's it's understanding who you are and adhering to who you are, right? To your code of ethics, right? Uh, to the way that you live your life, and so in a lot of ways. The person who adheres to their own personal hierophant is is much more in command oftentimes than somebody who is just very ambitious and strong and has leadership qualities, right? This person here can still exhibit self-esteem issues, whereas the hierophant has that kind of higher wisdom. They don't need to be surrounded by anybody to have that self uh, that's that um, that self-esteem right? Or the self-confidence. They don't need people around them necessarily. When you have the hero fan in your life, you get self-confidence through your uh, faith, right? Through your faith and uh, through belief, right? Your belief in, in, in how you live in your life is the way you should, right? And so it's a, it comes from a very different energy, a very different place. And so I can see how a king of wands, coming across a person who presents like that, it's almost as if this person may put you off guard, set you off guard a little bit, maybe even though you feel very confident, the King of Wands is extremely confident and ambitious. Somehow this individual with their kind of piousness sets you on edge a little bit, makes you feel a little bit nervous. I think about yourself. Um, it may, this person, I think perhaps, um, put you in the headspace where you begin to question your own motives. You begin to question what is it that you're really seeking? And so here comes the nine of cups, the meaning of that nine of cups. So this is what I was talking about with the nine of cups, because yes, nine of cups is wish fulfillment. A lot of people say it's your, be you know, it's your best wishes granted. But like I said, all the nines of the suits have inherent in them a lesson, a lesson of detachment, alienation, solitude, being alone, aloneness, not loneliness, but aloneness right? Being able to be alone, having a relationship with yourself. And so, um, the thing here though, with the nine of cups is the, is the fact that this, this individual has kind of kept that separation, even though their wishes are being fulfilled, even though they're getting the cups that they desire, they may be, uh, getting the lovers that they want, getting the friendships that they want, having the good relationships with their family or with their boss. They may be, you know, Mr. or Mrs. popular in a lot of ways, right? And so feeling like they have everything. But because of this aloneness, right, this detachment, this separation that they have, um, you know, there is this kind of like, uh, I want to say, um, almost a feeling of lack of control, right? It's the fear of losing control, right? That kind of pulls them back. That's what pulls this person back. The fear of, you know, if they allow themselves to completely fall into these cups and really give of themselves, there's that kind of really scary, well, will I be able to control myself? You know, and this is what people who have control issues fear, right? They fear losing control. They don't know what that looks like. Right. And so they hold on, hold on. And in way to in many ways, often uh, the most effective way or in somebody's mind, the most effective way to hold on to control is to simply hold yourself back, not to share. Right. But it's totally counterintuitive because that practice, in fact, uh, keeps you, you know, it keeps you in the state of turmoil. It's quite interesting, right? that uh, this individual here is making you realize these things about yourself, that this adherence or this worry about control, this need to hold on to control issues may be why you are not having that deeper connection that you wish to have. And so in this way, I believe this person is kind of pulling you in. There's attraction there. They see you as energy, right? You see yourself as king of wands. They see you as knight of wands. So they see you as you are in your energy, but certainly with a momentum, right? They see you kind of moving through life, right? The energy is very similar. It's just that they, this is how you see yourself internally and, and externally, this is how it presents. And so that makes a lot of sense, right? So your person certainly understands you. They understand you very well. Certainly if they have this kind of level of spirituality or faith or conscientious spirituality, they may have 
uh, an intuitive ability or just an ability to see clear, right? Because they certainly see you for who you are. They see you almost as clearly as you see yourself, but only from the outside in. So their insight is absolutely crystal clear. I believe this person is quite spiritual. They've, they've brought a certain spiritual mystique to you, uh, to your life. And you're kind of like in a whirlwind of it because as a result of it, because you see this relationship as a tower moment, you see that this relationship with some, this person is actually has the possibility to just turn your life completely upside down and take you away from everything that you held true about yourself, about what you thought you wanted in life. Right. And it's like this person that you've met, this individual that you've met is making you uh, question all of that. In a good way, in a positive way, but in a very kind of transformative baptism by fire way. Um, I think you feel you, you're attracted, but you're scared. Uh, you, you're, you may be feeling, I don't want to say scared, but apprehensive, right? You have anxiety. You may have a little anxiety about it, but yet they pull you in. I don't feel like this is a romantic relationship. I feel like it could, it could turn into a romantic relationship. This is almost the type of person that you fall for you fall in love with it's almost like one of these movie uh movie type falling in loves right it's like this person who's magnetic they have this wisdom they have this way of walking through life they have this way of conducting themselves and they just draw you in and this isn't about just like the usual kind of oh let's go on a date and i think you're cute this is you know this is the drawing in of somebody whose character is so uh, unusual to you, something that you haven't come across in your life before, or very rarely you have you come across a person of this magnitude, um, a person who has affected you so deeply. I would say that this individual is extremely refined, a very refined individual. Uh, and their energy is, uh, is causing you to have a tower moment, even though you aren't per se with this person, dating this person, probably maybe not even have ever even talked about that. It's almost like the attraction has surpassed that, right? The, uh, the attraction, the mystique, right? The drawing in that this person have and the effect they have on you to your core. Very interesting reading. Uh, I can see it. I can feel it there. You know, I can feel that almost they take your breath away, Capricorn. And they see the relationship as a five of swords, which is quite interesting. They see it as childish almost, as five of swords is hollow victory, right? Um, and I, so I wonder, it's like they see this relationship as something that would be almost like I don't want to, you know, it's hard to explain. I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like harsh, right? But I almost feel like they see this relationship as being almost like a minor, uh, uh, a minor kind of uh, object of interest for a moment. It's like their life is so, this person's life is so much on another level, right? That um, it's like, they see a relationship with you having a lot of kind of very petty energy with it. And I'm, and this is why I wanted to be careful with how I choose my words, because I don't see them. I don't believe they see you as being petty. Remember, they see you as the Knight of Wands. So they see you as being fiery and ambitious. They know who you are, but they see a relationship with you as, as having um, a petty sort of childish aspect to it. And I think it's more or less that they just don't think you're ready for a relationship with somebody of their stature, right? I think they 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 see the potential in you. They see the fieriness in you, the ambition. They see you for the strong Capricorn you are, but they also see that there are some issues that you're still tackling with that are quite childish issues by their standards. And I would say probably not by anybody else's standards. This person is so unusual that you've met. The things that they consider to be childish or kind of um, inconsequential or like uh, more a distraction, right, uh, to, their, to their present life, somebody else considers it like incredible, right? 
you know, you may have had people, for instance, I want to, I want to liken it to, for instance, Capricorn, you may have had individuals in your life that have really bigged you up and like, oh, you're so wonderful. And there was one particular trait about you that made these individuals just swoon. You always knew in your heart of hearts that this trait that you had was nothing big, right? But when you presented whatever this trait or skill or whatever this ability is that you have to them, it was like they, they thought it was the best, you know, that was one of these wonderful aspects or attributes about you. You know in your heart of hearts that it's kind of like a half-assed, you know, that you could do so much better. This person is this, sees also right into your heart and sees what you see, that Whatever else that you've been putting on that's been making everybody else swoon and fall over and think you're the best thing since sliced bread, and you know it's kind of a little bit of a fake out, this person sees it as a fake out too, and they're like, oh, I can't be bothered, you know? They think it's, they're like laughing, you know? They're like, oh, God, yeah, I know that this usually works for you with everyone else, but, you know, it's, a, yes, it's amusing. Yes, you're amusing. You know what I mean? And it's not even condescending. It's more that they're being just very patient, almost as if they're dealing with someone who's just unevolved or not as evolved as them, not as having the same sort of level of experience. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't know how you're going to, you know, this person is formidable, Capricorn. And this is not a slight on you in the, at all. Um, the fact that they've had such an impact on you, you know, it just speaks to the fact that you see it as well, right? You see it as well in them. Um, now, how this goes forward, I don't know, because right now you're having a tower moment about this encounter with this person. And I'm, I get the, very much the impression that you guys are not at all on a regular uh, communicative basis or have any kind of regular relationship, but something about knowing this person is just stuck with you or being with this person or meeting this person is just stuck with you. And it's almost been like ever since you've met this person, have had this, these encounter, this encounter or series of encounters with this person. I almost feel like your life has been a, a tower moment, right? And it may have been that you haven't even seen this person since that time. And yet you're still having this tower fall out from everything that they've kind of awakened in you, if you know what I mean, right? And I think this week it's going to come into focus again. It's like, you are you know, you. I think you're going to want to make contact with them. I think you're going to want to reach out to them. You're, the, the attraction is so strong, right? And, um, and your life has continued to have fallout. It's like the, re, the, the reverberations of the meeting that you had with this person is continuing in your life. Like, it's still happening, you know, and you, you may be living in, in different countries or, you know, you may, you may not have seen each other at all. You may be in two totally different social circles, what have you. But it's like you are experiencing, you're still experiencing the spiritual and emotional repercussions of meeting this person. And this person is kind of very much just like getting on with their life, you know. Um, and I feel like that you have a desire and a need to make contact with this person and see where that road leads you. Exactly. Chariot. Because right now there is, an, there is a feeling of just not knowing what the road ahead is because of this unexpected tower moment that you've had as a result of meeting this fellow traveler. You know, this fellow life traveler who's just had such an impact on you, Capricorn. Show me what's going on. Give me three cards for our lovely Capricorns. We're going to wrap it up. It's very interesting reading. I know I say that a lot. My regulars will know. But I find all my readings interesting. But certainly some of them have, have just this aspect to it. You know, it's just like, wow, what you're going through is so... Um, times are overwhelming right i try my best to get to the specific feeling that i'm trying to get across to you so that you know exactly what i what i'm sensing all right capricorn your first card is two of cups yeah you're you're falling in love with this person head over heels in a way ten of wands yes yeah, the end of a long road end of a long road and beginning of new and six of pentacles right so there's an aspect of money here Right, having enough money, being comfortable with money. I love the Six of Pentacles. It's such a beautiful card. Can you see that? There you go. Isn't that beautiful? The little baby dragon, right? 
Um, so six of pentacles is generosity, right? Um, there's an issue of money being generous, right? Having enough money. Um, it could be uh, that you need money to be able to go forward with your with your dreams or to be able to make contact with this individual. There is maybe some kind of constriction or uh, in the real world, there's some kind of restriction, limitation that is to do perhaps with money or finances that is uh, playing a factor in this relationship. But certainly there's two of cups because you are feeling and uh, you're feeling bound to this person. You just can't shake it, even though you guys aren't actually together. And I really don't believe you are with this person right now. Two of cups is in and then ten of wands. Right. It's that. It's that laying down that hardship, laying down the, it's the end of that road, right? They've shaken everything up for you. And it's like, you are so ready to lay down. Uh, you're so ready to lay down wands you've been holding on to for so long that I almost think you didn't even know you were holding on to until this person came into your life. I want to say that this 10 of wands, this closing of this period in your life, that looking back on it now has probably, probably been quite difficult. It's almost been uh, accelerated by meeting this individual, right? And so, of course, we have the Six of Pentacles there as well. All right, so I am going to leave it at that. This is your reading, Capricorn. Yes, your tower moment is continuing to happen. The rever rever reverberations are continuing, excuse me. And I think this week is a week where you're going to feel like you really need to do something about this, right? You need to figure out where this chariot is heading where is it that you really want to send it and part of laying that groundwork is reaching out i think uh to the either to this individual or somehow putting uh putting the plans in place to get closer to them or to get closer to some kind of clarification as to why they've had such an impact this is i, I want to say this is something you're not letting go until you get to the bottom of you know, whether it, it is the outcome of a relationship or just an understanding of what it is that's happened to you as a result of, of this encounter or series of encounters you've had with this, this very, like, uh, absolutely enthralling individual. All right. If this resonates with you, please like, subscribe and share. Let me know what's going on in the comments. If you have a similar situation, I'm so curious to hear about it because this is quite interesting. This is the stuff of movies, you know. Um, so um, but for right now, Capricorn, I'm going to say I love you so much. You have a wonderful week. See you next week. Bye bye.